Hello and welcome to today's daily Bible reading. We continue to plot our way through Leviticus and we'll be jumping into Psalms today as we read the second book of the five books in Psalms and we'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Your word is light. Your word is life. Your word is strength. And today, may we each receive light, life and strength. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we go. Leviticus chapter 18. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt where you lived, and you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my rules. If a person does them, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. All right, just before we jump into the section in Leviticus 18, let's just point out God has warned the people that the surrounding nations which they are wandering through are an idolatrous people. They don't honour God. And the land into which he's bringing them, the land occupied currently by the Canaanites, is an idolatrous people. And we mentioned before that wherever there's idolatry, there is sexual perversion. They go hand in glove. And so with that in mind, let's read what the Lord now says as he's warned them, don't live like these idolatrous people. None of you shall approach any one of his close relatives to uncover nakedness. I am the Lord. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father, which is the nakedness of your mother. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife. It is your father's nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your sister, your father's daughter, or your mother's daughter, whether brought up in the family or in another home. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter. For their nakedness is your own nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife's daughter, brought up in your father's family, since she is your sister. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister. She is your father's relative. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, for she is your mother's relative. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. That is, you shall not approach his wife, she is your aunt. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and of her daughter. And you shall not take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are relatives. It is depravity. You shall not take a woman as a rival wife to her sister, uncovering her nakedness while her sister is still alive. So just by the way, we, we could read that and think, oh boy, this is, you know, just about nakedness. But that last verse that we just read there in verse 18 is a clue that it's actually talking about some kind of sexual sexualization of that relationship. Because it says, you shall not take a woman as a rival wife to her sister, uncovering her nakedness, while her sister is still alive. So there's obviously some sexual implication here. So let's continue on. You shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness while she's in her menstrual uncleanness. You shall not lie sexually with your neighbor's wife and so make yourself unclean with her. You shall not give any of your children to offer them to Moloch and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And you shall not lie within any animal, and so make yourself unclean with it. Neither shall any woman give herself to an animal to lie with it. It is perversion. Do not make yourselves unclean by any of these things, for by all these things the nations I'm driving out before you have become unclean. And the land became unclean so that I punished its iniquity and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you shall keep my statutes and my rules and do none of these abominations, either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. 
For the people of the land who were before you did all these abominations so that the land became unclean. Lest the land vomit you out when you make it unclean as it vomited out the nation that was before you. For everyone who does any of these abominations, the persons who do them shall be cut off from among their people. So keep my charge never to practice any of these abominable customs that were practiced before you and never to make yourself unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Now the mm, irony, tragedy, the sad bit is that we'll, we'll go on and we'll read that the people eventually, many generations after this, they did. They did commit adultery. They did sacrifice their children to Molech. They did practice sexual perversion of the worst kinds that are described here. And the land did vomit them out. Uh, firstly, the, the northern tribes were taken by Assyria and the southern tribes, Benjamin and Judah, were exiled by Babylon. So let's now read Leviticus 19. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. For I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make for yourselves any gods of cast metal. I am the Lord your God. When you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord, you shall offer it so that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten the same day you offer it or on the day after, and anything left over until the third day shall be burned up with fire. If it is eaten at all on the third day, it is tainted. It will not be accepted, and everyone who eats it shall bear his iniquity, because he has profaned what is holy to the Lord, and that person shall be cut off from his people. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. Now just by the way, we'll, we'll see this principle play out in Ruth. It's, it, and, and it's the principle of how to look after the poor. It's interesting that, that it doesn't just say, take up your harvest and give a portion to the poor. It actually says, don't, don't strip your fields bare, leave some in there and let the poor go in and gather them. Let the poor go in and pick up what you missed. There's a principle here of reward for effort. There's a principle here of work. Work is far more than earning an income. It brings dignity. And this is a welfare system that had dignity embedded in it. Mm. Worth thinking about if you're a politician, by the way. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbour or rob him. The wages of a hired worker shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbour. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbour. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbour, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbour as yourself. I am the Lord. Uh, so oftentimes we think you shall love your neighbour as yourself, is a New Testament concept. But here it is, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. It was always there in the law. And Christ just reminded people of it. And it sounded quite foreign. Let's continue on. You shall keep my statutes. You shall not let your cattle breed with a different kind. You shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed. You shall not wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. And again, these were, these were pictures, symbols, these were to be things that would cause a child to ask their parents, why not? Why can't we do this? Well, son, well, daughter, this is because this is a picture of us. We are to be different to the nations that we're going into. Remember, that was the context that God established right from the beginning of this passage. The context was 
that you're, you're going in among a people who, who don't obey me. They don't live the way I want people to live. You are to be different. Don't mix the two. Don't, don't get caught up and mix the two. All right, continuing on. If a man lies sexually with a woman who was a slave, assigned to another man and not yet ransomed or given her freedom, a distinction shall be made. They shall not be put to death because she was not free, but he shall bring his compensation to the Lord to the entrance of the tent of meeting, a ram for a guilt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before the Lord for his sin that he has committed, and he shall be forgiven for the sin that he has committed. When you come into the land and plant any kind of tree for food, then you shall regard its fruit as forbidden. Three years it shall be forbidden to you, it must not be eaten. And in the fourth year all its fruit shall be holy, an offering of praise to the Lord. But in the fifth year you may eat of its fruit, to increase its yield for you. I am the Lord your God. You shall not eat any flesh with the blood in it. You shall not interpret omens or tell fortunes. You shall not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edge of your beard. You shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. I am the Lord. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, lest the land fall into prostitution and the land become full of depravity. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out, so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. You shall stand up before the grey head and honour the face of an old man, and you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. When a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as a native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. You shall do no wrong in judgment, in measures of length or weight or quantity. You shall have just balances, just weights, a just ephah and a just hin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and you shall observe all my statutes and all my rules and do them. I am the Lord. So those are some of the ethical guidelines that God gave to the people of Israel and those ethical guidelines may sound harsh I'm, I'm not sure if they do they don't sound harsh to me they sound like the the basis of a just society uh, respect the, the marriage of your neighbor respect women respect uh, people who are less fortunate than yourselves this is this is a, a, a great set of ethical principles for any society now let's come into Psalms. We're, we're reading book from book two. Psalms is divided into five books. This is the start of book two. We're going to read Psalm 42 and 43. To the choir master, a mascal of the sons of Korah. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forsaken me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. 
interesting that the psalmist was expressing their own despondency, their own depression. And there's a saying that the counsellors will often give to those who are battling with uh, depression and the like. It's it, it, You have to stop listening to yourself and you have to start talking to yourself. And consider the difference here that the psalmist is challenging his soul. Why are you cast down? He's talking to his soul and he's giving, as it says in the last half of that last verse, come on soul, hope in God for I shall again praise him. Some great advice there. Stop listening to yourself and start talking to yourself. Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Almost the second part of Psalm 42, but it's Psalm 43. And again, stop listening to yourself and start talking to yourself and start talking the truth of God's word into your soul. Let's pray. Father, as we consider the ethical guidelines that we were reading in Leviticus, we, we marvel at how you care for the detail of people, the, the, the very detail of people who perhaps are less fortunate for those who perhaps are often subject to being victimised. And here we have the ethical principles for how all people are to be treated fairly. And in Psalms we see that, that the reality that there are times when we become discouraged, we become despondent. And perhaps today those who are participating in this daily Bible reading are feeling that as well. So I pray that they will stop listening to themselves and they will start telling themselves the truth that is found in your word, that we have hope, we have reason to hope in the God who always brings light and life and strength into every situation when we seek his face. So today I pray that we would indeed seek your face and find light, life and strength in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've only just recently jumped into these daily Bible readings and you've missed some of them that have gone before, you can catch up. Catch up and come on this journey and come on this journey with us through to the end of the year where we're all going to read the Bible together. As you see, we're going through Leviticus, not, not a book that many people even dare venture into, but we're going to venture into everything in the scripture this year. So come on this journey with us. If I have read something and not maybe answered a question that maybe it's provoked, leave a comment there and I'll get to it as soon as I can and I'll try and answer that question about some of the scriptures that we've been reading. Please like this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow for another Daily Bible reading.